Ah, right, so going to make a start on the Z axis today. And um, although there aren't a massive number of steps involved in doing the Z axis, really, I'm going to do it in two parts. The reason being is that I'm doing some things certainly differently to Tom and also differently to the original. And um, that is, well, I've decided I want to use um, lead screws which are used in the original Prusa, but the um, lead screw nut here is slightly different dimensions to that used in the original Prusa. So their lead, scut, lead nut, Z nut, whatever they call it, holder, is the wrong dimensions for that. And in Tom's one, he uses a 5mm threaded rod, which I really didn't want to use. <laughs> so this is one of the upgrades I'm going for straight away, is to use uh, proper lead screws. Um, they really hardly work out more any more expensive than uh, buying a meter of M5 threading. So in Tom's one he uses these things here and the idea being is that you put an M5 nut in here and it sort of sandwiches together and uh, then that would basically mount onto there like that and then the, uh, if I can hold it together, and then essentially uh, it's all going all over the place and then essentially the um, M5 thread goes up through there. So that being the case um, I th I'm not entirely sure what they use on the um, on the original Prusa one um, but it's definitely different to this because for a start these holes on my uh, nut here are smaller diameter they don't line up. Um, it's a bit floppy in there obviously so that's not going to work. Um, so what I've done, and I've done one already because I needed to get this sorted out before starting really, um, is I have taken one of these, one of Tom's things, and I have drilled out my, thankfully it's got a hole in it, so it basically helps us drill it out pretty centrally um, in order big enough to get that in. Then I had the issue where... Um, I'm not sure if you can really see that, but uh, the holes are not quite lined up. They are slightly smaller diameter on my lead screw uh, nut here. So what I've done, and obviously there's two of them, with the one I've already worked on, I've literally just used the Dremel to uh, cut out um, those to make them into slots then essentially what happens is that goes on there like so and then the whole thing is basically going to go on there and then by using the original holes which obviously do line up in Tom's piece um, I can put nuts, uh, bolts through, nuts, um, that's going to hold it central and that hole there will hold the actual nut central. So I have got um, one more of those to make and uh, yes, yeah, so that's going to be take a bit of time. The other thing that I'm going to really take a bit of time on, because I think it's pretty critical. The rest of it is going to be pretty much as per the uh, original Prusa manual. Um, so I'll be time lapsing that. Uh, yeah, so let's get going. Right, so that is the Z-axis done and the X-axis mounted on the Z-axis and it looks a bit like this. So let's see, uh, yeah, actually all pretty straightforward. Um, obviously in my build I'm using the um, lead screws with the flexible couplings as per the sort of original Prusa. Um, yeah, so I spent a lot of time basically trying to make sure that these were as parallel as possible and as perpendicular to the um, y-axis also as possible. Measure and measure and measure and measure 
check and check and check and um, even then you're probably <laughs> still still a little bit out I've got a little bit of concern about this stepper motor because it really has next to no notches or steps <laughs> um, this one is a lot more steppy and this one feels a bit tight to be honest with you um, I don't know whether that's the motor or whether things I mean everything as far as I can see should be pretty well lined up and you can kind of tell if everything's pretty well lined up by um, this doohickey here Ugh. this thing here no that thing there if that is sort of um, you know pushing into the side into the ABS part here then it, you're probably not lined up um, because there's nothing else holding this up here um, yeah there's nothing else holding that in line basically so you know the the lead screw is secured at the bottom obviously in the um, in the old stepper motor and then you've just got the actual um, x-axis um, and the only other thing well there is nothing else that supports it actually it just goes through this hole and uh, as you can see that is sort of you know it's not really pushing on anything yeah and so well yeah that's pretty much about it really um obviously i had to make my mods to the lead screw nut holder things um, that seems to be absolutely fine i was actually thinking originally before i did this that this would be temporary and once i got the thing printed i would make my own adapters but these seem absolutely fine to me um yeah, all else is good. So uh, we'll move on to the next stage now, which I think is uh, putting the, the Y-axis in place and then, you know, starting to put the, the belt on this bit and the, all the extruder stuff. So, mm. yeah, let's do that then. starting to look like a 3d printer now um, so where was I last time um, yum, 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 yum. I've been following the Prusa manual all the way here now um, it's all standard stuff I think everything that I've done since the z-axis is all standard stuff so you drop the y-axis in as with everything else on this printer and at the end I'll probably do a sort of summary of my findings if you like uh it's all really simple apart well no it's all really simple but it, there's just loads of mucking about trying to because everything is just sort of bound together with lots of nuts and trying to get everything level you're constantly fighting to try and keep this uh, y-axis touching all four corners um every time you tighten something yeah it starts lifting a corner so you have to sort of frig around and then everything after that was just building up the um, extruder and the hot end and the various cabling of the fans uh, the um, tensioner for the filament um, which was all sort of kind of more or less straightforward um, yeah put it this way it's one of those things that you could do a lot quicker the second time um, you're sort of hesitant to sort of drill too much in case I drill through the wrong thing but essentially you know most of these 3d parts need drilling out um, there's lots of nuts there's lots of well in my case cutting down hex cap bolts um, you really need to get those 18 mm bolts because there's so many things and cutting them down to pain um, putting this belt on was uh, a little bit of a pain the only reason why is because the tolerances are just a bit too tight and I'll turn it around so you can possibly see the only thing is I can't see now <laughs> but yeah the tolerances in where these 
the sort of double layer if you like of belts grips in is a little bit too tight um, that's only probably because of the 3d print but it's really difficult to get like a file or anything in there to file that out uh, so the result being is that one of these lugs here snapped off um, I have glued it back on and it seems to be relatively uh, a fairly tough bit of glue actually because it's held everything together. I did take the opportunity whilst the uh, whilst the little piece was on the <laughs> separated to file it down a bit. Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's all straightforward. Don't get me wrong; it's all pretty straightforward. Um, you just need to allow quite a bit of time for sort of figuring out what goes where. Um, make sure you follow the instructions look at them double look at them treble look at them you know there's just dumb things like you know wasted time not much time but wasted time putting three bolts into the uh extruder stepper when actually you should only put two in because the third one and there's only three being used the third one is done uh goes all the way through and holds the whole thing on um i haven't yet obviously as you can see I haven't done anything with the wiring yet. It's kind of yeah where it needs to be so far. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with all the electronics yet. So um, every, all the wiring is going to be just wired up for now. Um, my plan being is I'll make some kind of um, housings for the electronics with the 3D printer once it's up and running. Uh, the reason being is because I'm um, yeah, going to be sort of doing... I've got those external fuses. Um, I'm probably going to run uh, an external, I don't know, solid state relay or maybe just a big MOSFET uh, to handle. I'm going to put 24 volts on the heated bed. Anyway, I digress. So basically, what I'm saying is, <laughs> I'm uh, I don't know what I don't know what I'm going to do with all the wiring yet. I'm just going to get the electronics on the bench, wire everything in, make sure it's out of the way to get it up and running. It's all kind of coming together. <laughs> um, so the thing, the next thing that's on the list to do is to put the heat bed on, and obviously the thermistors and all the wiring for that, um, and then electronics, I think, and then. Mm.